I was reading through this report from White Source on the state of open source security vulnerabilities, and I'm sorry to say it does paint rather a bleak picture. And that the number of vulnerabilities in open source software has been increasing year on year. Now, this is not necessarily just to rag on Linux and open source and say how bad it is. No, it's to try and highlight these things and encourage programmers of open source software to improve what they're doing and try and reduce the number of weaknesses that are going forward in the software. Microsoft have learned a lot about programming in a more secure way. They have trained their programmers well. Unfortunately, that has just not been replicated in the open source world. And how could it be? Who's going to pay for all the open source programmers to do a course on how to program more securely? Um, yeah, it's just not going to happen. So programmers just have to think with more of mentality this. Um, you know, there's one of these things that, uh, okay, let's say you want to build a fence 100 meters long or... Americans 100 yards long. The units aren't too important, but let's say you want a fence 100 meters long, your fence panels are 10 meters long, how many fence posts do you need? And if you immediately jump to saying 10, then you're wrong. It's 11. You need 11 fence posts to build 100 meter fence out of 10 10 meter long fence panels. So yeah, it's just that idea. Think more securely on input validation, and a lot of vulnerabilities will disappear. The research report focuses on open source security's weakest and strongest points in the hope of bringing some clarity, the fast paced and complex nature of open source security vulnerabilities. In this report, they'll be looking at a number of open source vulnerabilities published in the last year, and then a close look at the open source vulnerabilities in popular programming languages. The most common weaknesses and exposures, CWE, over the years, Open source vulnerabilities scoring and severity and vulnerabilities in the most popular open source projects that we all use and love. As you can see, there have been a never increasing number of vulnerabilities, and in 2019, there were over 6,000 reported vulnerabilities. The good news is that over 85% of open source security vulnerabilities are disclosed with a fix already available. And that is one good point of praise that updates are released very quickly. Although, on the other hand, they're not released on a regular basis, and, and individual home users, as well as enterprises, don't necessarily think to check for updates on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, enterprise environments may have like a monthly update schedule, so if you happen to miss that by one day, then you've got, well, 29 or 30 days where a vulnerability could be readily exploited. On the bad side, they're saying that the number of vulnerabilities is often reported in various different locations. But I suppose as long as it's reported to the software maintainer in a secure manner, then what's to worry about? Okay, you miss out on some of the reporting. And predictions for 2020. So we're starting to see the open source community looking for new initiatives in order to address the chaos in the open source security process. One good example is a GitHub security lab which aims to help researchers, open source maintainers, and users report suspected vulnerabilities in a secure manner without exposing a zero-day vulnerability to the world. And which programming languages are most secure? Well, in terms of most secure to least secure, they have listed Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript, Java, C++, and C. So C still has the highest percentage of vulnerabilities due to the high volume of code written in this language. Yeah, what can you say really? The more programs there are written in language will translate to a higher number of vulnerabilities. And shout out to Python, which still has a relatively low percentage of vulnerabilities, even though its popularity, especially in the open source community, continues to rise. Hopefully this is a result of secure coding practices and not lax research for Python projects. They've listed the most common weaknesses and exposures, and I'll come onto the MITRE website to look at those in more detail in a moment. But just to finish up, they've listed them across the different languages. So you can see for the more web-based languages, it really is cross-site scripting, improper input validation, and information exposure on most common weaknesses. And in C, you've got improper restrictions of operations within the bounds of a memory buffer, out-of-bounds memory read, and null pointer dereference. I also want to mention about this part here, the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, CVSS. So that rates uh, vulnerability from 0 to 10, and uh, 
There's various different parts to make up the scoring, but it's sort of things like, is it a publicly known vulnerability? Is it exploitable over the internet? Is it trivial to exploit? But yeah, those various sections, but you get a result between low, medium, high, and critical. Critical, it's like trivial to exploit over the internet, and you can get, say, quite a way into the system or get privilege escalation. So yeah, you definitely don't want uh, many critical vulnerabilities, but they've uh, listed them out over time for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. So you can see the overall number of critical vulnerabilities in open source isn't really too high and has actually been lower than 2016. So that's a, that's a good positive there. I don't want it to be all doom and gloom. The number of vulnerabilities that have been discovered haven't actually been too critical. And I'll look in a bit more detail about these common weaknesses. So improper input validation. They give a nice example here. So I've got some examples in different languages. Let's take PHP. So the following example shows a PHP application in which the programmer attempts to display a user's birthday and homepage. So they're just blindly taking the input from the get value. So the get being yeah, part of the website address, very easy to manipulate for anyone. So yeah, it's just, so it's blindly echoing out a statement from the get request with no kind of validation there. So you can put in say like anything from JavaScript, which does come on nicely to the next one, cross-site scripting, taking advantage of a browser's trust in the content that's displaying on the web page. Looking at some examples here, it is very much about input validation, displaying JavaScript within a, a GET request from a web page. That, that's not good. You, you really don't want that. And yeah, you could say take advantage of injecting a form in there, stealing passwords. Why would the browser care it's going to some other web page? It's what has been loaded. And the last one to look at here is exposure of sensitive information to an unauthorized actor. And this really comes down to simply got a form with a username and password, are you displaying the response that incorrect password or unknown username? Well, by giving the response of incorrect password, we therefore know the username exists. So yeah, it's just scraping extra detail from a website, giving an attacker a chance to log in as a different user. And there's a good reason why we have HTTP error codes that are like bad request and unauthorized. We're not specifically saying bad username or bad password, but rather it's just unauthorized. But it really is sad to see that input validation still exists in projects that have been around a long time. I just did a search for something recently in open source, so an open source application, Wireshark, vulnerability written about on the 27th of February, so yeah, only a couple of weeks ago, and we have input validation error. This failure exists due to insufficient validation of the input supplied in the WireGuard, Dissector, an unauthorized remote threat actor could exploit this failure by sending a specially crafted request to the affected application to generate a denial of service condition. Well, it's just frustrating to see that really. There really does need to be a positive outcome towards this. And as I said, I don't just want to do this video to say Linux is bad. On the contrary, you know, I absolutely love Linux. I sit here using the operating system. This video is made in Linux. I love open source software, but yeah, I just want the programmers of the open source software to think in a more secure way. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.